Okay, my name's Sam, uh, Samuel Foy from Australia. Uh, I live in Sydney, but grew up in the Southern Highlands, so a small little mountain town about two hours outside of Sydney. I guess to get into this, I do some wildlife work back home, so wildlife rescue. Uh, but other than that, a bit of journalism, a lot of bar work to pay for that. Um, academia, uh, I spend about 40 jobs I've had now. Bit of everything, you know, jack of all trades. So this actually isn't that much of a different thing to join in. Uh, I do some army stuff as well in Australia, so I'm in the reserves, um, infantry. Uh, so combining it all made sense, wildlife and army. And I've had a bit of conflict experience before uh, as a photographer. So it's not the, not the stupidest idea to be here, you know? At least I figure I can operate here. Uh, like all things, there's usually a girl involved. So um, I'm dating a beautiful Italian girl, Valentina is her name, Valentina Fiasco. Uh, so it literally means chaotic love in Latin, but it's, it works out that we travel a lot. So. Uh, there's a bit of chaos to it, but she uh, loves her wildlife and so she's doing wildlife management and through her I'd help her out with the wildlife rescue, things like that and it's just, I don't know, something ticked in me, I enjoyed it, especially I think the birds especially, when I get, yeah, get a little creature that actually relies on you, it brings out a good side of me, you know, there's a lot of jobs that guys do where you have to be hard and things like that, but this allows you to have that almost maternal instinct for something and it's, it's nice, I actually like caring for it. Lots of animals, yeah. So lizards, turtles. Uh, used to, I was that kid catching snakes in the backyard every now and then, and I do some snake catching back home and that. And yeah, dogs, cats. Um, had an aviary with some beautiful birds in there. Don't know now if I'd actually keep an aviary as an adult. I had an idea of caging them, but as a kid, I did appreciate that a lot. Uh, so yeah, always around animals. I just, I think no, our generation is going to be judged very harshly. There's something that's changed, say, you look at, say, the generations in the 60s, they fought for things and they had, they actually had some hope. And our generation has given up the fight a lot and I can understand why. It seems lost, so many things seem lost now. But I want to be able to actually stand up when I'm an old man, so at least I was part of, part of the fight. Um, I'm not that confident this fight's even going to win, you know, but at least on the side of history I was on the right side, you know, I was at least trying, you know. And I think history is going to judge this generation very harshly. And I'm thinking about that judgment and I want to be on the right side of it. Patrol was amazing. Um, being, out, being out in the bush, um, especially the day patrols, we were actually getting out there. Uh, liked it a lot. We found, uh, for instance, we found a buffalo kill. Uh, lions had taken down a buffalo. Uh, and you could sense they were close. You know, the vultures still, they were still in tree. They hadn't landed yet. And we tracked back to that same kill the next day and Lion Spore had followed us all the way back to camp. And we knew he was there, we could tell something was there, but we never saw him, but he knew he was stalking us the whole time. And being, I don't know, being back on the food chain, it's, it's nice to know your place, you know, to actually have to respect these animals. And life is too easy in the city sometimes, but out here you actually, you gotta switch on. And I enjoy that, I enjoy that a lot. I've been asking a lot of people and I'm sure you've probably asked the same questions and I'm still looking for that, that golden ticket, that one black and white answer. And the more I ask, I realise there is no black and white answer to this thing. And I don't know, I, I, I hope we're winning, but the money is too big, that money. Even, I come from Australia and Australia is a good country with a good economy, lots of work, things like that. And the money they talk about that you get for rhino horn I can see how people get corrupted, you know? And battling that, there's gotta be another way. It's gotta be somehow to stop that demand because that money's too big. You can't expect guys who, who don't earn much money not to be corrupted by that. And that's, that's, the, that's the thing I keep coming back to here. There's, uh, you can train as hard as you want, know the bush, everything like that. But if that money's there, someone's gonna do it. Someone's gonna do it. And that's what you gotta fight. So I don't, I, I hope we're winning, but this isn't the solution. Uh, you, you can, there's plenty of guys out there who are willing to fight like me, jump out and actually do that work, but there's got to be a smarter way.
no one would, and people don't want to fight either, you know. It's, I'd, I'd rather have a solution that doesn't involve boots and weapons, you know. But that's the trick, finding that. <laughs> uh, I think it's clear the first thing <laughs> you miss out here, but um, uh, definitely the feminine touch, yeah. Uh, you, miss, you miss girls a lot. It's, um, we had a bush pig here who was our pet and Peter almost he slowly became better looking as the days went on. Um, so that would probably be all top three actually, yeah, just a, a woman's touch, yeah. It's, you, I like that softer side of things and you don't have that here. That food and food as well, and I'm Australian, so I miss my beer, you know. There's support that can be given. Um, like I said, it comes back back down to money. It's a, I hate to make it that simple, but it's the world we live in. Money money makes this world go round, and that's the biggest thing you're fighting here. That that money buys people, and that's this. This is all based on money. It's people out. Poachers don't want to kill rhinos, they want money, and that's why they're here. And that's the only way to combat it too. Money, I mean, pay the guys more, get better equipment, things like that. That's actually what will stop the corruption and stop the, stop the actual poaching. So, and if someone's willing to actually donate, things like that, uh, not everyone's willing to fight. And in a lot of ways, it's sad to admit, but that would actually mean more than, say, having a guy like me here being involved. Money's the one, one that will fix it. by year really. I used to have lots of plans and now I oh, just take it as it comes you know. Um, have a nice girl you know so see her and see what happens. Don't know. Uh, if I can stay in the anti-poaching game I will uh, and the training here has been good so I'll see I'll see where this leads but um, I want to stay a part of this fight definitely but just got to see where it leads. No, just, hey, I will, you're saying what people can do. If they can actually come and do the volunteer course, definitely do it, and you'll, you'll learn a lot. The bush uh, strips away, uh, I don't want to swear on camera, but it strips away all the bullshit. All the bullshit goes, you know? You actually understand the basics. Having a full belly and warmth, that's, that's all you need, you know? And it turns the volume down. There's so many stresses that you have, say, in city life that you realise it, it means nothing, it just means nothing. Out here it's simple, you know, your food's full, your belly's full, you're warm and you've got dry socks and that's, they're the three things you need, you know, nothing else. So if they can do it, come out and do it. <laughs>